children to raise. I bind the devil. I bind the devil. I bind the devil. When we say we bind and loose, what are we talking about? Paul said we're talking about powers and principalities in the heavenlies. There are supernatural beings that have structure and order who are under the command of the prince of darkness. That would be the devil. And if you really get in a heavyweight fight, you're going to meet these people. And the way that you meet them is in the authority of Jesus' name. You bind them in your family. You bind them from your children. You bind them from your business. You bind them from your future. And you do so in the authority of Jesus' name. I really wish we would just stop it. You would think that with just natural intelligence that humans possess, coupled with the discerning power of the Holy Spirit, that Christians, Christians would not continue to bind and rebuke the devil. You cannot. You absolutely cannot. And the reason why I say you would think that, well, you would think and hope that we would have learned. How long have people been binding and rebuking the devil? It doesn't seem to work. I mean, just, just being practical, looking at it, you would understand that something about binding and loosing and rebuking the devil doesn't seem to be working. Something isn't right. How come in all of these churches, we've got thousands of churches all across America, small churches, big churches, we've got people are binding and rebuking the devil, even not to mention outside of church where people are binding and rebuking the devil. They might be in a Bible study. They might be somewhere with some friends. They might be in the house. They might be talking online. They might be on the phone. Devil, I bind you in the name. I rebuke you. Satan, get behind all these things. And it never works. You would think that someone would say, you know what? I'm going to stop doing that because it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. We have never been given the ability to bind the devil, to rebuke him. And by the way, what does it mean to rebuke him? We'll talk about that in a second. But here's where the problem comes up. It comes up Let's look at the two times that it shows up with the disciples. In Matthew 16, verse 19, uh, Jesus is speaking about how they are going to, upon the profession that Jesus Christ is Messiah, that he's going to build his church on this. He says, and I will give you, because he says the Holy Spirit has revealed this to them, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loose in heaven. Now, some verses might not say shall have been loose. They might say, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The reason why it says shall have been bound is for a particular reason. The same thing shows up in Matthew 18, 18. Truly, truly, I say to you that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. The reason for that is pretty easy to explain. The reason for the shall have been bound is because, and it's the Greek word, uh, the demena, which is to have been bound. It's the perfect tense. And so the Greek word that's used for bind is, matter of fact, let's go back over to Matthew 9, 16, 19, so you all can see the same thing, that none of the words have changed. The Greek word that's used there for bind is the word deces, which is to bind or to stop. And so we see the perfect tense here used for will have been bound. So the perfect tense, what does that mean? The perfect tense is a completed action in the past. And so he's saying that whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. So all he's saying is that to these disciples, to these apostles, that whatever you bind through the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll know will already have been bound in heaven. He's not really giving them the power to do so. He's stating to them that heaven will have done it. There's also a similar passage that used the perfect tense that we can also see where we kind of get a good understanding of what the perfect tense means or how it's used. It's not about binding, but it has to do with forgiving. And so that you can see that these apostles don't have the power to actually do certain things, even though it might look like that in English. In John 20, 23, it says, if you forgive, speaking to them, if you receive, I mean, if you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. Now, the point of this is to look at the, the tense. And so it says, if you forgive them, uh, the sins of this, this, theirs will have been forgiven. Notice the same tense used in the in the English here in the NASB. And in the Greek, it's clear also that this is a perfect tense. And because it's a perfect tense, he's simply stating that they have already been forgiven. It's not that the disciples, the apostles have the ability to forgive sin. And we know so. Why? 
because Peter in Acts 8, when he's speaking to Simon, Simon wants to buy the Holy Spirit. And what, is, what does Peter do? Peter does not retain his sin or forgive his sin. Peter is just declaring what heaven is going to declare. So he says to him, not that he forgives his sin, but pray that they will be forgiven by God. That's the point. So he didn't have the power, the ability to forgive sins. He's just simply stating this. So now this issue of Satan being uh, bound or even rebuked. Matter of fact, the rebuke part comes in Jude. Uh, let's go to Jude chapter chapter well one. Let's go to Jude uh, verse eight. He says, uh, but Michael, the archangel, and we're talking about Michael, who's also powerful. Michael, the archangel, when he disputed with the devil and argued about the body of Moses, did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. And so this rebuking, this is not uh, for us. It's just simply saying to to stop, to to tell, to, to hold back someone with our words. Well, can we do so? We don't have the ability to do so. God does. Eve, notice Michael, the archangel. I don't you're not you don't have the same ability as Michael, the archangel. But the Lord does, which is why he says the Lord rebuke you. Now, there's going to be one time, one time only that we're going to find Satan bound. And again, if you keep if you can bind Satan, if, if anyone disagrees with this assessment, that's fine. Give a scripture and then also explain to us how come every week that he's bound and then five minutes later, he's unbound. He's always causing problems. Remember, Peter's the one who says in first Peter five that for us to be alert, alert, to be sober minded, because why the devil is on the prowl like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Well, how could he be doing that if he's bound? Well, apparently someone keeps binding him. Someone keeps casting him to the abyss and someone goes and, and lets him right back out. So maybe you ought to bind the person that's unbinding the devil, which is all silliness because you, you can't bind him. You can't rebuke him. You can't step on his head. You can't get behind me, Satan. That's Jesus that can do that, not you. There's going to be one point in time where he's going to be bound. That's not you. That's at the command of the Lord. The Bible says, in Revelation 20, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding the keys of the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan and bound him for a thousand years. And so he's going to be bound for a thousand years. He's going to be released for a thousand years. And then the Lord is going to throw him to the lake of fire. But you can't bind him. You don't have the ability. You don't have the power to. If you did, please explain to us, because if you if you have the power to bind them, then I submit to you that it's your fault that the world is in the condition that it's in. Why? Because if you bind them and then he keeps getting out, why don't you bind him better? Matter of fact, why don't you bind all the devil, all the demons as well? Don't just bind the devil, bind all the demons, bind the world, bind sin. And so if you have that kind of power, then you're not using it properly. That means you are derelict in your duty. And I'm not actually accusing you or or saying that you are to blame because the, what I am accusing you of, anyone that believes that they can, is I'm accusing them of not following the scriptures, not paying attention, not just using, not even just common sense, but biblical sense. You cannot bind the devil. You can't lose him. You can't rebuke him. You can't make him get behind you. That is for the Lord to do. And he will. He will. He just hadn't done it yet. Amen.